Light interactions with vegetation are controlled at several scales. So first of all, we can look at within leaf scale, and this is controlled by photosynthetic processes, both photosynthetic and non-photosynthetic pigments, water content within the leaf, any self-defense or regulatory me mechanisms, including chemicals, and both leaf internal and external structures. So for example, hairs on the leaf or waxy, waxy substances as well. So you can have a look at this diagram here, which actually shows the amount of light getting into a, into a leaf. And you can see that the blue, green and the red light gets partial way into a leaf, it's transmitted, but it's the near infrared light that actually gets all the way into the internal cellular structure of the leaf. You also couple this with the information about the absorption of particular pigments within a leaf. So for example, if we look at this graph, we've got from 400 to about 750 nanometers, and we're looking at a number of different leaf pigments. And the green line is chlorophyll A, and you can see where its absorption peaks are. So the main parts of the spectrum where it's absorbing, so it's around about 675 nanometers, and there's another one at around about 460 or so nanometers. This also coincides with the action spectrum of photosynthesis. And you'll see that this is also a combination of the other pigments there as well that are used in photosynthesis. So when we use, we can use this to help us understand exactly how light is reflected and absorbed at the leaf scale, and then use this for creating map products with remotely sensed data. And so we've already looked at how chlorophyll and water, for example, affect our our spectra using the Liberty software, but you can also see that there's other parts of the spectrum where, for example, cellulose and sugar and starch are also affecting the way our spectral signatures look. If we step up from the individual leaf scale where we've got the internal structure, chemistry and processes, form and morphology, like casuarina leaves compared to a broad flat leaf palm, um, orientation, um, any waxy coatings, anything like that. We can then also look at the canopy and how that affects radiative transfer. So this is really looking at the density and arrangement of individual leaves, the crown form and any layers within the structure. Step up from that and we look at a stand and we're looking at structural properties of that stand, the topography, microclimate and vegetation biomass as well. And this is an example how you can use that type of understanding to actually create an information product or a map. So this here is looking at some Landsat data and developing a relationship in the field between canopy cover and reflectance in a particular wave band. And then this is once that once that relationship has been determined, this is then used back in the image and applied to then create a product which pixel by pixel you can then estimate the amount of canopy cover in this example at that particular location. This is a similar example here looking at estimating the amount of chlorophyll and water content in, in tree crowns. And this is done by the exact same process of understanding the, the chlorophyll and water absorption and how amounts of that are, affect, how amounts of chlorophyll and water affect the amount of of light that's, uh, that's absorbed at specific wavelengths and then using that to come up with an equation that can then be plugged back into the image to create a map of that information.